So today, um, my presentation is recording your PowerPoint uh, slides and recording your PowerPoint. And not only that, recording it, but some ways to edit it. Uh, we'll also talk about some ways to kind of get ready and prepare uh, for your recording. And finally, um, talk to you about uh, storage options. Um, so there's going to be a, got a little bit of everything in today's presentation. So we'll start out with talking about ways to get started in this process. Um, the process of storyboarding, which is a really kind of an important piece. Um, although your PowerPoint is a storyboard, uh, we're going to talk about how you can enhance that uh, and make your, uh, make your presentation better. Um, the next thing is uh, making your recording and saving your recording, different saving options, uh, some best practice, and then we'll talk a little bit about accessibility. All right. So to get started, one of the things is the recording is only available in the desktop version. So if you use the online version of PowerPoint, you will not be able to record your presentation. You must, the only way that you can record it is on the desktop version of PowerPoint. Um, one of the really cool things about the recording is you can make your recording either record the entire presentation or uh, record slide by slide. I'm, I'm pretty big on recording the entire presentation. Um, but sorry, for some reason, this is very sensitive today. Um, if you arrange your slide, if you, but, Everything that you record for a particular slide stays with that slide. As soon as you advance the slide, then the recording stays with us. So what's really nice about this is if at some point during your presentation, you're thinking, I want to rearrange some slides because I think they work better. As long as you've recorded it, then the text that's on that slide that you've recorded will go with the rearrangement of the slides. So you don't have to re-record the thing. When you edit your presentation and you find some mistakes on those slides, you only have to re-record that slide. Um, and, that, and, and then you can delete the bad slide and, and, and put the new slide into your presentation. Um, and then the one other thing they recommend is actually using, uh, instead of the webcam that comes with <clears throat> your computer, to go ahead and use an external webcam and microphone. Um, it gives you better results. And this is coming from, these recommendations all come from Microsoft. In fact, they come all pretty much from the same website. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing here for just a second and uh, share, my, share my screen differently. So one of the things that I have here is I can share my, when I'm working on my presentation here, is one of the things I need to do is there's, there's two ways to record. I can go up here and I can click this tab called slideshow and it lets me, here's my recording functions as well here. But I actually have more functionality if I actually add a recording tab. And this goes very easily. It's explained in the instructions, but it's, it's four steps. I click file, I scroll down to the bottom and click options. Uh, this menu opens up, um, and then I go to um, customize the ribbon, and I click the checkbox that says recording, and I click OK. Oops, five steps. Once I've done that, now uh, right here's my slideshow tab, here's my recording tab, and then I can record right from here. It also gives me, uh, the recording tab also gives me um, some saving options, and it'll let me actually throw in a screen recording as well if I wanted to. In other words, I, I can literally record the screen of my uh, presentation. Any questions so far? Okay, let's talk a little bit about uh, storyboarding. Um, storyboarding basically is you, you basically put down on paper what you're going to do with your presentation, no matter what kind of presentation that you want. And a storyboard is basically an organized sequence collection of, of, of information that you're going to be using. Uh, it's a written narrative, which you already have for your PowerPoint presentation. Any content, 
interaction? Um, are you going to play a video? Are you going to uh, push a button that links you and takes you to a website? Um, there's some really cool tools that you can highlight and uh, annotate your presentation. Are you going to use those? Um, making notes about that, and you can, you know, you can come up with it. Just take a. Uh, I'm a big fan of um, uh, uh, legal pads, and I just use legal pads for making lots and lots of notes. Or you can take something as small as a little notepad like this, and then just, you know write down slide one and and maybe you know just narrate you know just make some quick notes of what you're going to do because then you can quickly refer to it as you're making your presentation and refer to some things you need to do so you can remember what you're doing and then any editing notes that you want to have as well uh, as you're reviewing the presentation you can make some editing notes and say for example if you want to re-record a slide um, those editing notes will help you to be able to make that slide, re-record re that slide very quickly and easily and uh, know exactly where you want to be. As I said, it's kind of the process is you, you, you've, you've already done these three once you get to the PowerPoint part. You've determined your topic, you've talked about the format, you've created your narrative. And then the next piece is you'll kind of determine how, what, and where of the interactivity, uh, as I spoke of in the previous slide. You may want to take a minute and rehearse through the presentation just to make sure that you, if there's any words that are difficult, you don't stumble over them. Um, make your recording and then test it out. Make sure everything works okay. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about making and saving a recording. Now it's interesting, this link uh, that, uh, that has been provided to us by um, Microsoft takes you to this page and in fact this page anything that is pretty much everything that is in this presentation came from this page um, I may have reworded some things but or I might have uh, you know done some different screen captures but um, the page uh, covers pretty much everything and I'm just going to play this so it shows you kind of how easy this process is because the process is fairly easy in fact um, I started it, I did it for the first time. I actually recorded this presentation as a test. Um, and, all I, and, and I ran through it like one time and then I made a pretty decent recording. The only problem with my recording was I would, uh, I would make a mistake and I'd have to start the slide over again. So I'm gonna go ahead and play this presentation for you. It's about two minutes. Uh, Hold on just a second. One thing you always want to remember is you tell whenever you share your screen, there's a couple of buttons at the bottom of your share screen that you're going to share the computer sound. Otherwise, nobody can hear you, uh, hear your presentation. Okay, so we'll start all over again. Uh, if you can help uh, hear me, just um, since I'm sharing my screen. Record audio it. to provide narration for your presentation. Select Slideshow, Record Slideshow. We'll Here select start recording from beginning to record from the beginning of the presentation. I thought I shared that screen. Hold on just a second. Okay, do you, um, do you see a screen now that says record presentations on it, Caesar? We see your desktop, it's the file explorer. You see what? We see your um, file explorer, I mean the file, different files. I don't know why, okay, now do you see the? Yes, screen? can you maximize it please? Uh, no, uh, yeah. Record audio to provide narration for your presentation. Select Slideshow, Rec Slideshow. 
We'll select Start Recording from Beginning to record from the beginning of the presentation. Select or clear what you'd like for your recording, and when you're ready, select Start Recording and Start Speaking. Welcome to the Litware Contoso Sales Proposal. You can pause the recording if needed, or select Close if you're done. If you want to record audio for a specific slide, go to it and select Record Slideshow, Start Recording from Current Slide. Audio won't record when slide transitions are happening, so let those play first before you start speaking. All information in this presentation is confidential. If you use the pen, highlighter, or eraser tool, it'll be recorded as well. A sound icon appears to let people know there's narration on the slide. And to remove timing or narration, select Record Slideshow, Clear, and select what to take out. When you're done recording, save and share your presentation with others as a PowerPoint show. Your recording will automatically start playing when someone opens it. Okay, now, interesting thing about that recording, you should see my presentation again. Um, interesting thing about that recording is that um, uh, they've updated the, the functionality on here, so, but, but the process is just as similar and it's very easy to, it's very easy to do. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to my getting started page and I'm gonna click my button that says record, record from current slide, and then I can start my recording. Now on my share screen, you should see um, several buttons in the upper right corner. I just wanna make sure that you see them, uh, upper left corner. It says record, stop, and replay. Do you see all, do you see those? Yes. Okay. Um, these are the records to start your recording. When you're making a recording, the, you have your advanced buttons right here that allow you to advance. Okay. And then you can also clear, uh, and this would clear the recording. Um, and when you click clear, it just basically, um, clear recording on all slide or clear the recording on the current slide. Now, this is a really important button because if you make a mistake while you're making a recording, you can pop, you can just clear the recording on the current slide and start all over again. All right. And then these are your highlighter tools. So you have an eraser, you have a pen, and you have a highlighter, and then you have all these colors that you can choose from. And then down on the bottom right, I have my settings for my microphone and my camera. Now, I've turned these two off, and the reason is is because I really don't want my picture in the bottom right corner, but if you turn them on, your camera will take a picture of you, and then you'll see yourself in the bottom right corner of your play. Record is very easy. You just hit the record button. It will give you a countdown. Three, two, one. Hi, welcome to our tutorial on recording your PowerPoint. Let's get started. The recording option is available only with the desktop version of PowerPoint. Remember, if you rearrange your slides after recording, then the recording stays with the slide. You don't have to make another one. And if you edit your presentation, only re-record the slides that are edited. Be sure and use your external webcam and or microphone when making your recording. These are best practice by Microsoft because external uh, microphones work best. Okay, so I'm gonna make my recording here now. And as you can see, here, here are the instructions. The first thing you wanna do is you wanna click record slideshow. And then choose a recording type, record from slide or record from beginning. 
Once you've done that, this window opens and shows you where all of the tools are located on your recording. And then after recording, you always want to make sure that your recording worked. So go ahead and uh, record one slide and then go back and play it back. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. And click my replay button. And then after recording, you always want to make sure that your recording worked. So go ahead and uh, record one slide and then go back and play it back. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Right. So um, now what you notice, it just, it just played back that one slide that I recorded. So as I said, if you record your first slide and then do, uh, do the replay, then it will go right through and um, record the rest of your slides. Now, if you want to go back and play those slides, that's not a problem either because I just go to the slide that I want to play here now and as you can see here here are the instructions the first thing you want to do is you want to click record slideshow and then choose a recording type record from slide or record from beginning once you've done that this window opens and shows you where all of the tools are located on your recording and so on and so forth. So as you can see, it's pretty um, easy to start and stop a recording. By the way, these, um, these icons um, continue to stay on your slide. As I said, you can actually re remove them uh, by cl clicking the clear button in the record mode. Or if I just click on them, uh, I can just delete them and it takes them all away. There we go, and they go. I just hit the delete button. So then I, on my presentation, if I need to re-record the slide. Um, and again, this clear button here on the clear timings, um, all I need to do is go into my record button. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Um, click this record slideshow button, click this, it'll give me the clear button and then I can clear uh, that recording. Um, a couple of other things is that you can, if you have a, if, if you have a picture that you want to bring in, you can also, uh, uh, while you're recording, you can just minimize your screen and actually do a screenshot from someplace else uh, and take that screenshot or you can actually record whatever's on your screen and bring that into your presentation. Um, the saving process is pretty good. It's pretty nice. And I want to show you the three options. Um, the first one is called save as show. Now when you save as a show, it saves and it's called a PPS format. So it's still a PowerPoint format, but it is, um, when the person clicks on it to open it, like if you put this in Blackboard and uploaded it to your Blackboard site, it will actually um, save as a PowerPoint show. And so when I open this, um, it actually starts playing as a show, automatically begins playing. Um, the second option I have is called export to video. Um, on here, it gives me some different options for, uh, for recording. I choose the recording that I want, and then um, uh, I choose the, the recording, the, the, the quality I want, and then um, I tell it I want to use the recorded timings and narrations, and then I click create video. One thing about doing this, uh, doing the recorded PowerPoint, um, on your computer and turning it turns this into an mp4 the size of the mp4 is about four times larger 
than um, the size of your PowerPoint show, or excuse me, 10 times larger than the size than your PowerPoint show. And then the third option is publish to stream. And this is my favorite because what I can do is I've got a title and description. I've actually got this in stream already, but I want to show it to you. Um, I can allow everyone in the organization to see the video or I can just upload it and then I can set the privacy settings myself, which in other words, I control who sees the video. And then I can also upload my original PowerPoint file along with the video. And then I click publish. This takes a couple of minutes to publish. Uh, but once you're done, uh, it pops it right into, uh, into uh, your uh, stream. Now, Microsoft Stream is a free service. You get up to a terabyte of storage space um, with that. So you can easily store your uh, files and folders. It's very easy to access. I'm going to walk through that process here. Um, I've got my uh, UIW website open. I click Cardinal Apps. I log in in this case. I'm surprised I have to do that. Uh, I go to Cardinal Mail. And we've... Uh, The reason it does that, I was actually already logged in, and so it wanted me to log in again. And then I click on the waffle in the upper right hand corner of my Outlook window, excuse me, upper left hand corner of my Outlook window. Just click the waffle there, click stream. Um, if you haven't used stream before, it's going to be under all apps, by the way. So, um, but it's pretty easy to find. Opens up your stream page. And I am going to go to my content and click videos. And voila, there is my <coughs> PowerPoint all ready to go. And once I've done that, then I can do a couple of things. I can share it, uh, I can uh, download it, um, or I can. Um, if I've got it someplace, if I've got it saved someplace else, I can replace it. Um, all of those things are are available to me. Um, and then now I, as I said, now I can share this. Now this is going to be an MP4 format. Hello and welcome to our presentation. Record your PowerPoint slides. This, by the way, is the one I did yesterday. Today we're going to cover. So uh, it's right there so that you can view it and watch it. And preparation said, for recording, this one yesterday, storyboarding. Preparation for our, our, our uh, page. The other presentation is currently uploading. It takes a few minutes to upload it. Um, as I said, this is, I think, about a, five, uh, a 45 megabyte size file. So it's really huge but you've got a terabyte of storage in Microsoft Stream. So storage should not be a problem. Uh, you, it, it's, gonna be, it's gonna be really hard for you to run out of, out of space. The other really nice thing about using the cloud is all your stuff is saved there. It's accessible from your desktop computer or it's accessible from the cloud, depending on uh, where things are saved and it's safe. Um, so, uh, it's, and it's very, very, very accessible. So if you have some old, um, PowerPoint presentations, um, that you're using, or when you, uh, I know Dr. Hinojosa has been a real innovator in the way that he uses PowerPoint and, uh, in, um, and adding images and videos and, and narration to his PowerPoints. Dr. Hinojosa can, you know, maybe update his PowerPoint this year and then they can record it and they never has to deal with it again unless he updates that. And remember, if you update a certain slide, you only have to re-record that slide uh, to put it back and, and then and use it in, in your uh, presentation. So it's really, really, really cool. Um, 
A couple of best practices. These are things, again, this came from Microsoft. It's not anything I came up with. Um, oh, good, my presentation's ready to go. Um, best practices for recording. Um, PowerPoint won't record in between your slides uh, as you transition from one slide to the other. I'm not a big user of slide transitions, you know, where the, you have like a, you know, you have the, there's about a two second pause between the slides so it can go from one slide to the next. Not a big, I'm not a big fan or a user of them, but if you use them, please feel free. However, um, the cut, fade, push, swipe, split, random bar shape, and morph are the best ones. And the reason these are so good is because um, these are the same ones that you can use if um, you are using this presentation and your students are gonna be watching it online. So if you save it as a PowerPoint show and your students are downloading it from online and are gonna be watching it through the online version of PowerPoint, um, these are the only ones that you can use. Um, you can, again, record the slides. If you wanna record slides with annotations, make several copies of the slide and do them a couple of times to get the result you want delete the ones that you don't want. Um, that way you're not making a lot of mistakes. And again, and um, you can also make sure that you refer to all of the notes in your storyboard as to what you want to do on that slide. You can refer to those notes and make sure that you've taken care of all that. And it just gives you a couple extra chances to, uh, to play with that. Um, um, as I said, make a quick recording of one slide, play it back. That way you know that your audio and your video are coming through, uh, that everything really sounds good. And then you can continue. If you don't like it, great, make some adjustments and then start again. Or if you do like it, just hit record again and then continue recording your presentation. Um, and the same thing, and again, that video preview uh, does the same thing, it's a repetitive best practice of it all. Uh, and the other thing is, if you're doing a longer recording, let's say that you're recording something that's maybe 20 minutes long or 30 minutes long, take breaks. Uh, your voice gets tired. Uh, I've been doing this presentation for a whole 25 minutes, 28 minutes, and I could really use a, a soft drink. So, you know, pause your recording, have a, have a, for refreshment available, uh, take a sip and then come back. Um, uh, I think you'll find that makes the recording a little bit easier and your voice uh, won't get so stre uh, stressed. Okay, um, the next thing I wanna talk a little bit about is that there's a couple of ways that you can uh, make your video more accessible to student. And I have some links in here that you want up to different help articles. Um, but the one that I wanted to touch base on is um, if you um, upload your document to stream, then you can actually get a closed caption file generated by stream um, instead of manually writing a closed caption file yourself. That said, the manually writing a closed caption file by yourself is definitely going to be a better way to go as far as quality um, and understanding. Um, uh, Caesar, is it 87% accurate with string? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. That, that about right? Yeah, yes, Terry. Okay, so manually writing this thing is gonna be 100% accurate to everything you say, whereas stream's about 80% accurate, accurate in getting to know your voice and your annotation and, and, and what you're saying. Um, and um, the other thing is you wanna make your presentation available to people with disabilities. Uh, and the way that you're gonna do that is doing things like, um, um, hold on just a second. Uh, one of the ways that you'll do that is by um, uh, following some simple rules like, oops, hold on just a second. 
um, um, is uh, doing things like doing alt tags and um, doing things that, uh, making sure that the pictures are properly labeled and things like that. And each of these links actually goes to a really good Microsoft support page that really explains um, how to do alternative text um, and how to um, add information, uh, the slide, uh, uh, how to use an accessibility checker uh, and some different tutorials to add um, alt text onto uh, Office 2019, which is the most current version that, uh, that you'll have if you pulling your Office uh, 365 from, uh, I mean, if you're pulling your, uh, if you're, uh, if you've got a current computer, it's going to have Office 2019, but that's the most current version, and that's one that's continually updated. Um, so, and then, um, by the way, that tutorial was based on the video tutorial I showed you is based on Office 2016. And so, there's a whole lot of different uh, things here, along with a great website, a great link to a website to how add text to visuals to images and uh, graphics and things, how to actually add alt text. And it's pretty easy to use. Um, there's also a button in your PowerPoint um, column under form on your, if, if you're formatting an image to add alt text. But it's very important to make that information available to students who are blind or, uh, or uh, have some kind of visual impairment um, that you can use. Um, Again, and then having the closed captioning is going to be helpful for your students who have uh, hearing issues. Um, and so, again, here's how Microsoft Stream will actually make demonstrations for videos, um, and it explains um, everything on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, for Microsoft Stream. And these are all the different to uh, tools for doing that. Okay, does anybody have any questions? Let me go bring back and stop my sharing for a second. Good afternoon. Uh, so does anybody have any questions or uh, comments or um, am I missing anything, especially when I'm talking a little bit about accessibility or uh, any of those things? Or are you all ready to go out and start making your, uh, recording your PowerPoints? <laughs> Well, I would like a copy of your presentation. So, a uh, copy of the presentation yes. is in the week three folder already. Okay. Uh, I just posted it this morning, so uh, it's already there. Uh, the, I have the copy of the presentation, and then, as I said, we'll probably record. Um, I'm hopefully, we'll record this. We'll create a folder, and we'll have all that stuff in there. Uh, there's also a link to the video um, to the video that I uh, started open the open the session with. And there's a, and then that just has lots of great, that actual page, in addition to me having some little tutorial pieces in here, that actual page leads you step by step what you need to do to record your PowerPoint. I'm, I'm sorry, Terry, you said where it was, but I don't know what that, that means. I don't know. We three. Uh, I'm sorry, it's in the, uh, the web page that you're, uh, are you taking the, um, the course is called the, the, um, hold on, let me pull it up. Uh, this is the uh, flipped classroom course. Are you part of that flipped classroom group? No, I am not. Okay. okay. I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you're taking the flipped learning course, it's in week three. If you're not taking the flipped learning course, um, um, just shoot me a, uh, just send me an email address. Um, in the in the text file and i'll make sure everybody gets a copy of it Terry, this is carol lee uh-huh um so a question i have is in powerpoint if you go to insert and then you uh, i mean when you bring up the menu for insert mm -hmm. there's an option for inserting video mm-hmm my question is, in relation to what you're teaching us, is that 
a, I mean, does it have an upside or a downside? I. Okay, so the video is going to be an external video, like something that you've pulled in from um, from YouTube. Okay, let me. I, I was also able to insert a little box into my PowerPoint that that I mean, where I mean, I don't know if the students would appreciate it, but they would see me introducing the PowerPoint. Yeah, and so yes, in fact, that's uh, part of that recording process. Let me go back and share my screen here. Hold on just a second. Share screen. Okay, so here I am in the PowerPoint presentation here. Okay, and I'm gonna go to my uh, record button and I'm gonna go ahead and record the slideshow. And when I'm setting up my record screen, Okay, you'll notice that I have all these options here. Bottom right corner, if I turn off my camera or turn on my camera. Oh, unfortunately, you won't let me do that because I'm using my camera for Zoom. But as you can see that camera is off and when I turn yeah. that camera on, then it will put um, my picture into the presentation. Uh, and and okay. and then now if I have an external video that I want to share, then at that point I can uh, put a link into the external video, and click on it and uh, have that video appear. Does okay. that make sense? Yes. Harry, yes. Harry, is that when you say you insert your picture? Does that mean you're you're live? Um, or is just when that? Insert when I'm putting in that image of me, it's going to be an image of me talking. It's basically going to take this camera over and it's going to be looking at my face as I'm speaking. So I okay, need to be so looking at my camera, but it's just going to right. put me in the bottom right corner right. so they can see who's telling who's, who's speaking. And you have, and again, I turned that off to begin with. Um, I am not really all that excited about being people seeing my face <laughs> for those for those of you who may or may not have noticed i i actually i actually tried to disguise myself with hair and it just you look good you facial look good. hair and i decided that the facial hair was about as popular as our president is right now so i decided to shave it off. <laughs> you look good. um anybody else have any questions Grab a micro, you know, you've got a camera already. You've got a microphone already because you're using Zoom. Go grab one of your PowerPoints and just click through and knock this out, knock out one. You'll see how really, really easy it is. And as I said, the, the you know, the functionality is such that, um, that, you know, you can, I mean, I literally, I'm, I'm pretty good with PowerPoint, but at the same time, it's not one of my favorite toys. Um, and it took me no time at all to to get my first kid to do my recording. Um, right. In fact, as I said, I did it live while I was just right while I was playing with it. Uh, and I've only done the, I've only, that was only my third recording. Terry, could you put, Go ahead. Terry, could you put the week, the PowerPoint in week two because week three is invisible to us yet. Okay, sure. I will take it. Yeah, I can. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Terry, if you save to stream uh, and you want to link that PowerPoint only to certain individuals, can you do that? Run that by me again. Um, let's say you save to stream. Uh huh. So yes, if you put it in the stream. In, but can you link it only to certain individuals? Yes, when you share it, you just define who you're sharing it with. Does it have to be just internally? Um. You can share it with people outside of the organization, just as long as you share it with that email address. Let me okay. get back to my stream page, hopefully. So if I'm gonna share this, ah, oh, here's my new, here's my new PowerPoint, it's all ready to go. Uh, I just click here, I click share, and then I just, uh, here's a link I'm gonna share directly. We're not, seeing, we're not seeing your work. You have to share screen. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, 
I got, I got, everybody was kidding me last week because I had 20 something different websites open and a whole bunch of stuff open. As you can see, I've still got a bunch of crud open on my computer. And so I tend to I see I'm easily distracted. So I have lots of, I have way too many things open on my computer. Okay. So I'm going to share my screen. Let's go with that one. Okay. So when I share, I just click the little button here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, see, it's, it's visible to private, so I'm going to click here. I'm going to click share and uh, copy the link. I'll click email. Uh, and I'll type in Hinojosa. How come you're not? Yeah, and further down? No? Oh, I may not be on the list. That's all right. Because you're trying to keep me on the list so I won't bother you. N -L -J -O -S -A, comma, G. Hey, what is going on here? See, I, I bother you too often, so you've taken off. <laughs> well, you gave me Dr. Starkey. Hi. H I N O J O S A comma face. Am I not on there? That's that's fine. Don't worry about it. We get the picture. Yeah, for some reason it's not doing it. I don't know why. I'll check with the staff um, on that. Yeah. Okay, well that's okay. I can just copy this and just go to my regular email and uh email it to you. So I was trying to do it right through the right through the through stream. But that's not a problem. Again, I can just go in here and, um, you know, do a new email and then Thanks. Boom, paste it and you'd have access to that. So all you really need to do is just click copy and you can, you can send that to somebody. Um, so uh, there's a couple of, uh, oh, oh, there's the other one I wanted to mention is so let's, one of the things that we talk about is that you can add things to, uh, you can create groups. Uh, let's say that you can create a group just for the students in your class. So if I want to do that, I can also just click this add to groups button and go through my groups. Uh, let's see. Uh, ITS. Uh, okay. I can throw that in, boom, click save, and now that group has access to that to that video. So, um, so that's the uh, that's the sharing functionality as well. So you can share it with a group or a channel. Now a group is private based on the people you put into it, and then a channel is public, so anybody can see the channel as long as you give them access to the channel, um, especially if they're outside. Like if you copy the channel and send the link to somebody that anybody can see that. Um, any other questions regarding our um, adventure into recording a PowerPoint? This is, I don't, I mean, recording a PowerPoint honestly is as easy as, recording a PowerPoint is as easy as creating a PowerPoint at this point. It's that, it's that simple. Um, all you really need to do is uh, make a PowerPoint. And then uh, I would highly recommend taking a few minutes to just map out, especially if you're going to have any kind of interactivity in there. Um, uh, if you're, you know, if you're going to be highlighting stuff or you're going to be um, um, uh, bringing in, you know, going to a website, you want to make, go ahead and make sure that you, you know, you take some notations and say, blue, you know, red highlighter, circle all of the parts of, uh, of you know, circle all of the bones in the rib, rib cage, or use yellow highlighter to make sure that people understand um, the, the uh, you know, whatever, whatever point you're trying to make. Just make some notes on that so you know that you need to, as you're coming up on that slide, that you need to do that so you're prepared to do it. And it gives you, it's less opportunity to make, you know, it's less time to make a mistake. But if you make a mistake, 
not a problem. Just start all over, you know, just click clear, clear the information on that slide, start a new one. Uh, or click your back button, click the forward button, and then re-record. And that recording, and then you can just delete the one slide and keep the other slide. It's so easy to use. Anybody else have any questions? Thank you, Darren. Thank you for the presentation. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. And again, um, if anybody else needs the tutorial, the, the presentation and the, uh, all the links in there are there, just go ahead and uh, put it in the chat. Um, and besides Allison and, uh, or anybody besides Allison, just co paste your, copy and paste your email address into the chat. <clears throat> and then I will be sending that to you. Um, right after we quit, right before we shut down the meeting. All right. Well, it's Thursday. It's another great day. That's another, uh, we're almost done with another week, believe it or not. It doesn't, it amazes me how time flies when you're confined to your home. So. <laughs> I call it house arrest. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yes, I said, I call it my incarceration. Um, but, you know, I, 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 I don't know about, I mean, how many, I, I've done a, what do they call it? A, uh, uh, what do they call those things you, you do before you die? Living will or something? No, 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 it's, it's a list. A bucket, bucket list. list. So growing a beard was on my bucket list. And... I grew a beard, I grew a goatee, and last night I was just so disgusted with it, I shaved it off. <laughs> so, <laughs> don't miss it a bit. It's kind of nice not having, um, the, only bad, the only funny thing is, is at my age, it should have been gray, and it was, it was redder than my, actual, than my actual hair is red. So I was kind of like, <laughs> so. Okay, well, thank you so much for your time today. Have a wonderful weekend. Um, and again, you, let us know if we can be of any other, any more help to you. All right. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Terry. You're welcome. Thank you very much. And Caesar, thank you. Welcome. Thank you. Bye. Hey, Ray, how are you? Yes. yes. Thank you. I'm well. Thank how are you? So thank you very much. Thank you. How do I get out of here? Bottom left. Hi, Terry. I wanted did I wanted to ask you a question. Go ahead. But as have you stopped recording? Uh, no, me, I can't stop. <laughs> let, me stop let me stop recording. Uh, yeah. It's about